Good day folks, it's Animal Revan here, hope you're doing well, and I have to say that we're getting ourselves ready in the 1st of May 2024, but there's a lot of things been happening in relation to Helldivers, and I have to admit there was a bit of a retakes in this video, so feel free to bear with me. As we're getting ready to do a Clendefo drop in here, diving right into the action, we're going to, in the first wave, being small bugs for us to kill, we will smash the entire area and kill anything that has worn two legs. Yes, Helldivers 2 is fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fun, interactive, engaging game. Fast-paced, especially at the higher difficulty levels. And it's so graphically intense. Orbital strikes, airstrikes, you name it. There's a lot of variety of weapons, armor, choices to choose from. Character characterizations. Um, ships, upgrades. There's so many things. I mean, like, I can say that, that this game is so interactive. And it's great to have fun with your friends online as well too. Big shout out to my friends Preds and Law who have been helping me out for quite some time here and many others along the way. So big shout out to everyone who has been joining the fun of playing Helldivers 2. Well, Helldivers 2, ladies and gentlemen, has been so fun and engaging. This reminds me of the graphics and the hardware push back in the early 2000s. Now, back in the early 2000s, there was a game called Crisis, and it's a game that has been pushing the hardware for the computer gaming industry for quite some time. And because of a couple of things, the level of detail that was using, and as well as the hardware specifications back then, it was just like, why not we just put you know something out there that makes it so much better for the gameplay and everything. Well, to have it on ultra detail, you needed to have the best top of the range gear back then. And all gamers, just like myself and many others out there, were itching to play a high detail game. And Crisis back then was really CPU and graphics in, uh, intensive as well. And the game itself, uh, Held Overs 2, does remind us of this. So I have to say a big shout out and kudos to the developers who made this game. It's fantastic overall. The only drawback I have with Helldivers 2 is this. Sony. Sony made an announcement about them regarding to having, uh, I think it's PSN. I think it's called PlayStation Network. Um, to be Accounts to be merged with Steam or something like that. Or linked to Steam. I, anyway. The funny thing about it all was that they mentioned this in a way halfway through after the release of the game and a lot of people got really, really pissed off with it. You know, the funny thing was that on Steam originally beforehand, when the game was released, it was overwhelmingly positive. And then within 48 hours, it became overwhelmingly negative after the news that what, you know, Sony announced. The developers were not happy about it, obviously, and Sony themselves, you know, like, really contradicted everything that they did, and that really put things back in the, behind the eight ball. I mean, like, it really put us to shame in a way. There's a lot of countries out there don't support the PSN network as such, and there are a lot of countries have pulled the game off from their store from Steam as well too in recognition that well they were not very happy with what was being announced and everything so I can't say I blame them now I will admit I mean like I logged on to my Steam account uh, today most recently and for me based in Australia I was actually having a look at a friend of mine as well too and Helldivers 2 is still there but they did put a, a, a bit of a disclosure, letting us know about them going to a PSN account will need to be added onto your game in the near future. So at least there's some sort of transparency there. It's not a good look though, when you think about it. And I was a bit really disappointed about it. Me and my friends were a bit annoyed about the fact that we have to do this sort of thing. So I just feel that, you know, like, you know what? If, the, if Helldivers 2 became a PlayStation game, it's really going to piss us off in a, in a bad way. But 
I think what they're trying to do is trying to link the PlayStation players to play alongside with the PC players. And if that's a goal, fair enough. And I just don't understand the whole thing. Uh, why would a developer would, you know, change halfway through the release of the game anyway? So anyway, it happens with a lot of game companies. It's a good example is when like with World of Warships, if you think about it, that they release a new warship, it's all great, fine and dandy. It's we get all excited, and there's a bit of a, a big hype for it, you know. And the hype started off, everyone's in there, and all of a sudden, nah, they they made a nerf and change or something that, that happened with it, and a lot of people get upset about it all and stuff like that. Well, they have every right to be uh, and upset, and that's you know perfectly reasonable. But yeah, I just, you know, I don't get it. I don't get it anymore. But at the end of the day, I mean, we just play the games for the fun of it and enjoyment. And that's the biggest thing that we have to understand. I play games online for fun and, you know, it's relaxing with friends and blowing something up if you want to put it in that context, depending on whatever the game is. And if you had a rough day at work, or a rough week at home, or just need time to clear your head on something, then, you know, this is the way I would do it. Honestly, I, I use this as a good excuse for myself just to sit back, relax, and just chill out, really. But that is the real reason why that when I first saw Helldivers 2, I actually had no issues with it when it first came out, and I still love it. And I still love it to this day, but I don't like the announcement of what Sony did anyway. But anyhow, uh, that's neither here neither there right now. But, you know, it's just annoys me that, you know, game companies, developers have a tendency to change things halfway through. And, and they, they really did piss us off, I have to say. But, you know, in all seriousness, though, I have to admit that the Star Wars May the 4th be with you has came and gone. And honestly, when I looked at it, the Star Wars whole thing over there, Star Wars is fun. I mean, like the new Dark Forces uh, remastered edition for the original Dark Forces game was very well done. The graphics looks good. It's like much more sharper, clearer. It looks like they would really redone it in a way that the level of um, detail looks like 4K. Honestly, or ultra high D, HT, high definition. So it looks good, but at least the game's still fun, it's still enjoyable, and I have no problems with it ever since then. I mean, like, I played a little bit of it, the first mission, just to see how good it is, and then the music hasn't changed. Um, the interface hasn't really changed, except, you know, like, it's much more sharper and clearer, as I said. The only thing I can say about it all was that Dark Forces and the Remastered Edition is definitely a good, you know, starting point of rebuilding Star Wars games to have a better, you know, resolution and stuff like that. So I remember back in the day when I first played the original Dark Forces game and it was, I think it was like 640 or by 480 or 800 by 600 I can't remember the resolution was but that was old man <laughs> that was old but yeah anyway that's just one of the things that it brings back good memories and good times now one thing I will mention very quickly and briefly in this video is that I will admit that there was a few things that came across to me not too long ago and one of my viewers and friends of mine was telling me that the they were having a bit of a rough issue in terms of the streaming side of things and I was actually trying to understand what was going on but for a bit of an understanding here is that anything to do with on streaming platforms Remember, you have to be very mindful about whatever you say and whatever you do on there. For transparency sake reasons, that you have to understand that whenever you say something on there, 
it cannot be taken back. And remember that there will always be people that you can get along with and people who cannot get along with. Now, I will admit that not everyone can get along with everybody, but it's very important for you to understand that you never do certain things on the streaming platform as such, where I think in my own side of things is that you have to remember to protect your own integrity always. You see, when I updated my stream rules, Discord rules as such, I did it in a way to protect my community. And why I did this is very simple. The community itself needs to have a bit of a consistency. And that's why I want to make sure that everything is done in a very professional manner. Whenever I handle things, I just want to make sure that things are handled in a very um, professional way and manner. And honestly, oh, here goes an overall airstrike. Uh, oh, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> gonna dive away around from this that this was a bit of a close call mode here and yeah i'm just very lucky to get away there alive that just a moment now what i'm saying is that when you're streaming and you're dealing with your rules and stuff like that there's everyone has their own beliefs and morals okay and if you can run into a situation where you don't agree with something or anything like that just remember it's like a tv show you can watch uh, you know, your TV and if you don't like a certain show, you always can move on and do anything else that you like soon afterwards, right? But it's very important for you to understand that you need to run away uh, from any conflicting issues or any potential drama situations like my friend is doing right now. Here he goes, he's running. That laser beam was chasing after him. <laughs> now, the thing is that Anything to do with anything to do with serious, you know, drama or anything that can be seen as quite bad, you need to get away from it all and don't get yourself involved with it. I, I have to say that one of my friends was telling me that he saw something that was going on and it didn't say anything good at all. The best advice I gave was like, look, you gotta move away. You gotta move away. Don't don't get involved with it, and just get the hell out of there. And pretty much they did, and I'm very proud of it because me myself, I have had situations where that people have you know said or done things, and I have seen a lot of crazy shit in the last eighteen months on the streaming world. And I have to say that you know even in real life, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on as well too. And at the end of the day. We, we need to understand this is that, you know, there's a lot of things happening in left, right and center that we need to be vigilant and avoid any conflict in going forward, especially if something that you believe is not cool with you, you just have to do what is right to protect your own integrity and, and your own beliefs and everything like that as well, too. Everyone has their own views and opinions, and we all respect this, but at the same time that why i don't hang around in certain areas like this is because that i don't like drama and i just definitely just want to get the hell out of there and honestly you can backlash and that's a bit of thing about it all that when you have certain things been going on left and right you just need to do what is right for yourself and you just don't want to get your you know, uh, your community in trouble or yourself in trouble by anything that's you know being self-inflicted, especially anyone who has been going through very serious issues in real life. And that is the biggest thing that I have to say that whenever I hear that sort of thing going on with people around the world, I just stay away. And that's the best thing you can do. I sometimes at some point that I had to go great lengths in cutting all ties with some people. It is a bit rather unfortunate. I mean, like, I know that I don't want to, but it just got to the point that, you know, you have to protect your own community and yourself going forward. That is the biggest thing about it all. And that's why I stay focused on 
the positivity in this aspect and encourage people to stay positive regardless of all the circumstances that have been going on with your life. And at the end of the day, it's all about how you enjoy it and do things and going forward. That's the main thing. And that's why my piece of advice is that whenever you see that something that's conflicting, that goes against your beliefs and morals, or even something that you don't agree with, don't publicize it out there and just move on and get the hell out of there and just don't get involved. That is my biggest advice in going forward for you all. But you know what? Anyways, have fun, take it easy, and enjoy the public day holiday for those that know. But until then, stay safe and take care, and we'll see you around on the next video.